Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, got a pretty cool system in store today to show you guys. We're gonna be making a mono layer of gallium arsenide. And I got some tips and tricks that I like to share. Um, some things you might wanna consider as you do this and prepare these for electronic structure calculations. Um, there's just some things you might wanna keep in mind. So uh, without further ado, I have a I have a hexagonal gallium arsenide crystal. This is different from most of the stuff I do because I usually recently at least have been dealing with uh, cubic crystals, although in, in some more recent videos I haven't. Um, but these type of unit cells, these hexagonal ones, these can be pretty tricky, especially to new people uh, doing this type of research. And so, uh, you know, it's pretty common to be making monolayers, especially these sort of like three, five semiconductors. So I just thought I'd make this tutorial for everybody. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the atom colors because for some reason these gallium and arsenide are very uh, simil similarly colored. So I do this by coming to properties and then I go to atoms and for gallium I'm going to make it a dark green and for arsenic I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, a yellow and press OK. And so here's something right off the bat I'd like to say. Some people, depending on who you talk to, they'll tell you that a monolayer is an entire unit cell. Other people will tell you that the monolayer, like in this case for gallium arsenide, is just, uh, th that a monolayer is just this layer here. You know, like this is one monolayer. And, you know, what I would suggest you do is you do pretty comprehensive literature search and, you know, see, see how many people say what, you know, if you get that, you know, 10 people say this is a monolayer and then, you know, three people say it's the unit cell, then you go with this. Okay. Uh, but for now, what I'll do is I'll show this case because I think this case is a little more difficult anyways to make, uh, especially if you're like new to Vesta and new, new to making these crystals or these input files. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with this. So I'm pressing control Z now to get me back to where I was. So another thing is, you know, if I wanted to just make this system, I could just delete these atoms, save this as an XYZ and just put these coordinates in this unit cell. Um, but the thing is, if you do a calculation on a surface with just two atoms, you're gonna have a pretty low density of states. And, um, you know, if you wanna do dynamics or anything, looking at these, I or, and just in general, I think I think your system should be a little larger. At least have a, you know, if it's something like two atoms in a unit cell, you could at least have a two by two by two supercell, because or at least a two by two supercell in this case because uh, you just might get better integration. Um, so when when you solve the when you solve for the electronic structure, that's just how I personally feel about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, go to unit cell and I'm going to make this a two by two by one supercell. So I do this by going to edit, edit data, unit cell, transform. And then I'll make this a two by two by one. Go ahead and press okay, press yes. And then this is important. I'm gonna go search atoms in the new unit cell and add them as new sites. Then I'm gonna select okay. Then I'm gonna press apply, okay. And so now you can see the cell and the number of atoms in there is larger. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this A so I'm like viewing along one direction and then I'm gonna isolate the monolayer I want by highlighting these atoms and deleting them. And now I need to do two things. I wanna save this as a VASP. So I go to file, export data and I'm gonna save it as a VASP. So I'm gonna call it gallium arsenide hex monolayer dot VASP. Then I'm gonna press save save as Cartesian coordinates. And then what I'm also gonna do is save it as an XYZ. So I'm gonna file, export data, and I'm gonna save it as an XYZ. And I'll call it gallium arsenide hex monolayer as well. And I'll press save. And I do not save the hidden atoms. Okay, then what I do is I come over into my text editor and I go to the XYZ file. And um, yeah, I go to the XYZ file and I am going to select these atoms. So we have four of each, four gallium, four arsenic, arsenide, you know, I might interchange those terms. Then what I do is I'm actually gonna paste this into here. 
Okay, so I'm going to delete these atom labels. And so you can see we had four gallium. This means that the first four are gallium and the last four are arsenic. Um, arsenic, arsenide, I actually don't remember exactly what it is. Um, anyways, AS. Then I'm going to rename the file. This first line doesn't matter. It's just, it's just the name. So I'm going to call it gallium arsenide hexagonal monolayer. And then what I want to do is I'm going to add approximately, well, I'm going to add 15 angstroms of vacuum so that there's approximately 15 angstroms of vacuum between the monolayers. Now there's already a little bit, so that there might be like 16, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and add 15 angstroms of vacuum. So I'll turn this, I'll turn this six to a 21. So you can see I'm, I'm adding it in the C direction. So I'm going to go ahead and press save and exit. And then I'm going to reopen this. And you can see that now we basically have our gallium arsenide monolayer. Uh, there's only a few atoms, so it'll be computationally efficient. Um, but there's enough atoms such that you'll have, you know, a good amount of electrons in the system still. It won't just be like a two atom unit cell, you know. Um, you know, for example, I think arsenic has maybe five valence electrons. Gallium has two or ten or two or twelve, rather, based on the uh, pseudopotential you choose. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and recolor these again, pressing properties, atoms, and then here for gallium, I'll go ahead and make that a dark green. For arsenic, I'll make it the yellow. Press OK. And that's it. Um, now for the visuals, I'll go ahead and go to boundaries and I'll expand it uh, three by three. OK, perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I want to add, add the bonds. So I'm going to first compute the bond length. So I come over here to this distance tool, click gallium, arsenic, 2.48. Okay, so it's approximately 2.5. So then I go to edit bonds and I'll search 2.5. So you, you always have to go greater than this number. So it's like 2.48. So you going 2.5 is fine, but if I went 2.46, then it would not find the bonds. So then I go to arsenic, to gallium, okay, and I, I press apply, and you can see it finds it, and then I'll go here and press okay, and that's basically it. Here is your monolayer of gallium arsenide, and um, if you go do electronic structure calculations, you would ac actually, you'd basically just use this input file here. You'd have to, you know, also refill in the atom labels most likely. Uh, if you were to do like quantum espresso, for example, you'd have to do that. Um, but yeah, this is this is how you make this monolayer. If you have any questions, just uh, you know put them in the comment section. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.